Will, uh, Adam said last week the 15, 16 players have come back and got PBs. Were you one of those players? Uh, no, I wasn't. I, I did cut my time uh, from pre-Christmas to post-Christmas, which I was happy with. Uh, get the old legs going, but uh, no, no PB for me. I think I was running a bit quicker when I was about 21 years old. How are you finding this preseason uh, compared to ones in the past? Uh, I mean, you know, we came back uh, relatively late, um, obviously to finishing later in the year, but um, I think the way the group's come back, it's, it's probably one of the best I've seen. Just everyone seems, you know, really motivated. Um, there's a lot of different dynamics in the groups now because you know, some guys will want a flag, but you know, some guys missed out due to injury, selection. Um, you know, guys we've got in from other clubs, so it's uh, it's challenging, but it's pretty exciting with um, you know all those different dynamics. You were on the periphery last year. Do you feel like you'll be on the periphery again, despite the, the medal around your neck? I think I think most years I'm on the periphery. So um, I've sort of probably the last couple of years I've. Um, it's probably put me in a better space mentally as I've learned to deal with that a little bit better and realise that um, you know one one bad game for me you know possibly means that I'm out of the team for you know quite a long time so it helps with my consistency you know living on the edge like that a little bit but uh, I don't know you have to speak to Simo He's, he pulls the strings up there. Has it helped like going going through where you last thinking you were out and then get and then playing in a Premiership? But does it change the way you view being on the on the edge? Um, I mean it was just quite a. Pretty big roller coaster ride at the end of the year there, with you know, you know, thinking you're going to miss out and then end up being in the team, and um, you know, you, you reach the highest peak. So uh, I think just sort of coming to grips with that um, was just one sort of challenging thing over the off season, just the ups and ups and downs. But that's footy, and, and that's a great thing about it. And you know, for me, I was lucky enough I, I was at the top there at the end, but could have quite easily not been. And um, yeah, we turned to 2019 now to. Uh, hopefully do it again. Do you reckon everyone will look at you as the inspirational sort of story if they're in the two this year and think, well, uh, yeah, I'm just because I'm here this week doesn't mean I'll be here when it matters? Yeah, I'd like to think that um, not just last year, but you know, hopefully the way I've sort of carried myself, um, especially in the back back end of my career, um, you know, playing a fair bit of waffle during you know most seasons, um, just trying to you know play at a high level at, when you when you are playing waffle. Um, it hopefully puts you in good stead, you know, personally and form-wise once you get to AFL level. But I guess more importantly, it shows the younger guys, you know, how to go about things when you're, you know, not quite where you want to be. And um, yeah, I think uh, whenever I finish up, that's what I'll probably be most proud of is, um, yeah, hopefully just teaching the young boys like that through through performance and consistency. Will, how does that affect your hunger? Being on the periphery, you're now Premiership player. Is it? Affect your hunger going into this season? Are you as hungry as some of the uh, other guys missed out? Yeah, I guess it just means that, um, like I said, it's just a different dynamic. I mean, you, um, the, the guys here have won a flag, so that's the pinnacle. But um, like in any industry, not just AFL, you can't just hang your hat on one year. And this is our this is our job. As much as you know, it's great fun. This is what we do. So um, the motivation doesn't really change. It's probably just coming from a bit of a different direction. Um, you've, you've obviously got different motivations through, you know, guys you'd like to see wing another one. Um, you certainly don't want to be someone that you know plays in the flag and then packs up shop. So I think motivation just comes from a different direction and still definitely just as motivated. Just on a personal level, what are your goals, expectations for this season? Um, I'd like to win another flag. That'd be that'd be ideal, but I mean we're we're not we're not sitting here thinking you know we're just the best club in the land and no one can touch us. It's a extremely competitive competition. Um, last year's shows, I mean, I don't think many people pick West Coast and Collingwood to be playing off you know, on the big stage. So I think um, you know a lot of the measures the AFL put in place to equalise the competition. I think it's coming to the front, to be honest. I think um, there's a lot more teams coming into 2019 that can challenge for a flag and believe they can than any other year I can remember being in the system. So I think that's got to be a good good thing for our game, good things for fans. Um, you know, West Coast, we always, you know, we're trying to make that top four, uh, puts us in good stead to, you know, challenge for a flag. That's what we'll be doing. You saw glimpses of Oscar Allen and Jared Brander last year. Brander has been spending a bit more time in defence. What are you seeing from those two? Are they putting enough pressure on? Can they jump into the 22? Yeah, I mean, <coughs> you both saw, <coughs> sorry, um, you saw little glimpses of them last year. They both, you know, saw some first-team action. So 
I think just naturally the you know younger players as they in the system longer they start developing and um, you know yeah Jared's been spending a bit more time down back and Aussie up up forward a bit but I think the strength of those two is they can do both so I think it's just finding the right balance you don't want to be a jack of all jack of all trades master of none but um, you'll, you'll see a bit of them at both ends but they're both incredibly exciting boys and um, been really loving their work this pre-season but they're just they're just building on what they did last year. Just as you were going through the finals last <coughs> week, saying you weren't sure whether you were going to be playing or not. Is there someone in the squad that you specifically bounce that off, or, or do you just go through by yourself, or even in the defensive unit that you kind of work with? Yeah, I think um, the back line's uh, pretty tight. I think that'd be the same around most clubs. Is the back line usually the tightest guys because we've got to mop up everyone's mess. So um, we we spend a fair bit of time having to whinge about that most most years, but. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty tight with a lot of those backline boys and um, we, we try to look after each other as much as possible because, yeah, it is tough mentally sometimes. Um, selection, um, you know, scrutiny that's put on you know, a lot of players, so you've got to have outlets and people to talk to. What's it like having the captain uh, down there with you in the back six? Does that help out? Yeah, it's been good, Bunger. He's, um, he, leads, keep, he, he keeps my hair hairline um, the second worst in the, in the back line, which is good. Um, that's generally what he's there for. <laughs> No, he's a great, he's a great bit of experience that we can all lean on. Um, that's what makes him such a great captain. He's level-headed, um, leads by example, and you, you know, you know what you have to do to be, you know, making him proud. So, love playing alongside him. Well, you have special license this year to break team rules key, in key moments late in games, given the success you had with it last year. Yeah, I, I generally take that on myself um, to be running down the middle of the ground with no one on me, and when I'm meant to be in the full back in the goal square on my opponent. Um, I don't think Simo was too happy with that, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be doing my best to be, just be playing my role. I think I'll do that. Well, yeah, That's so best. He wasn't happy with it in the end? Uh, no, he's fine, he's fine. It's all good. <laughs> I, didn't, look, I didn't get his permission though. Do you, do you look back on it and think, it is amazing how little things turn into potentially premiership winning things? Yeah, I think. Oh, I mean, I'm a, I'm a big AFL fan. I, I watched every grand final for my, my whole life. So I, I know that little things, um, mean th you know big things in big games um, you, s you see what happened in 06 um, you know little things like you know Daniel Chick's mother and Shepherd and that's what you know we're, we've sort of built ourselves on the culture at this footy club is you know hopefully do the little things right and um, you know good things will happen and yeah clearly there was a lot of you know little things that went well for us on the day but you know flip of a coin it could go the other way and you're standing here as um, you know just missing out on the flag so um, here we are, 2019 pre-season, and that's what we're trying to do, just build on little things and get better. We'll be the left field one. It's a year since the stadium opened this weekend, just gone. As a player, looking back, how much has it changed the sporting landscape for you guys as athletes? Um, I mean, access to those facilities has been huge for us. Um, you know, it'd be great if we could train there every training session, but um, we've tried to replicate, you know, at least ground size out here at Lathlane, and it's been terrific here at Lathlane. But, you know, playing in... Um, you know, a world-class arena, it, it's huge for us. The similarities to the MCG, I think, is big as well. Um, it certainly helps when we travel over there. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just really happy you know, I'm a part of it. You know, guys like Sam Butler, only game he's played on there is uh, they had a little veterans game before round one last year. So, um, yeah, definitely thankful and, and humbled that we're able to, you know, get out there and, and play in front of, you know, massive crowds.